Chanello, nerds and nerdettes, I am Sebastian Koberg and I got crazy here today. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. That's because I've just been talking for a whole hour with the power behind Team Liquid, the clan, about what they're doing, how they're doing it, and where they're going with it. Yes, exactly. I've been talking to Victor Gusens, also known as Liquid Nazgul, the legendary Brood War pro gamer, nowadays manager for the Liquid clan, the power behind the players, as well as Matthew Peterson, uh, owner of The Little App Factory, the company that uh, supported the original HDH tournament during the StarCraft 2 beta with Husky and HD StarCraft, and nowadays being the dedicated and fully committed sponsor of the Liquid clan that enables everything uh, to happen over there in Korea with the GSL and elsewhere. They are indeed the power behind the throne. Now, they are the throne on which, onto which the players sit. Uh, let's not go further with that metaphor. Either way, they are um, the shot callers. And I've been talking to them and I think you'll find what they have to say about pro gaming, esports, StarCraft 2 and Liquid's place in it. Very, very interesting indeed. So, uh, it's an hour long. I think it's pretty awesome, but that's me. I'll let you be the judge of that. So, without further ado, let's get on with business. Here are the liquidators. Hello and welcome everybody to this very special PolygonReview.com broadcast. Uh, it's unique in many ways. Today I'm not only having a triple interview for the first time with two guests on the show, but I have two very special guests indeed. They are the power behind Team Liquid. First of all is uh, the clan leader, uh, the unrivaled Nazgul, and also Matthew Peterson uh, of uh, the Little App Factory, sponsor of the clan and of StarCraft in general. Welcome guys, how are we doing this first day? Thanks, thanks for having us. Uh, doing well. That's good. I'm very well, thank you. Yes, uh, Matthew, of course, um, broadcasting to us from Australia, and uh, uh, Victor broadcasting from the Netherlands. So this is going to be a challenge to uh, not uh, speak over each other, but uh, let's start off with uh, you, uh, Victor, also known as Nasku, uh, the leader of uh, the Liquid Clan. It's been a very, very interesting recent couple of months. Uh, we're going to talk about everything in more detail, but basically, how does it feel to be on the top again? Um, well, that the team is doing well is obviously really great. Um, it, it feels it feels like old times, really. Like um, I, I still like StarCraft. I've always liked StarCraft a lot, um, even though I haven't played like between 2010 and maybe 2000. And, Four, I didn't didn't really play anything at all, um, but I've I've always been involved like with the website, always uh, never really left that, always been following the the pro brew war scene, mm -hmm. and to this, to see the team doing so well and even like um, competing with the Koreans and hopefully in the future beating the Koreans, uh, it's just a, an amazing experience. Oh, definitely. Uh, it's been great to follow, and um, I know that uh, basically everybody uh, watching uh, this broadcast will have watched the uh, GSL games and uh, seen our boys uh, fight their hardest. And uh, it's it's a truly great time we live in these days. And uh, Matthew, uh, you've been on the show before, though we had some audio issues uh, that time, which uh, I'm happy to have uh, resolved now. And uh, you, of course, your company has been sponsoring uh, StarCraft 2 ever since the beta when you uh, and made the uh, very popular HDH tournament happen. And now you're fully and very seriously sponsoring the Liquid Clan. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about you and your company's commitment to StarCraft 2? Uh, sure, we're very committed, um, mainly because we, we like it so much. Um, not many of us have actually followed brood war at all uh, so it's all brand new to us but we're enjoying the strategy behind it we're enjoying the, the community as well especially um, the community that teamliquid.net provides and you know we're we're going to be here for a while it looks like that's very great to hear and uh, it certainly looks like um, uh, as even as a corporate entity you have good reasons to stay 
but of course, uh, you two are here today to talk about the current uh, state of uh, the Liquid Clan and the players, uh, both in Korea, Europe and North America, where you're heading and what the ambitions are. But uh, in case uh, there are some viewers out there who have not read every post on Team Liquid, could you, um, uh, Nasgul, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, what uh, recent players you have acquired and uh, who will be going to Korea soon and uh, how they have been uh, holding up um, uh, recently? Right. Um, well, I, I think that, uh, not to go too far back, but the latest uh, rec- uh, recruitments are uh, Red. Mm-hmm. Um I mean, I think most people know him, especially from uh, his uh, Brute War career. Yes. Uh, fantastic player. Um, definitely, like, a, a lot of talent. Um, really, really a lot of potential when he when he commits himself. Um, he's had a... I guess he's had some trouble um, finding the joy in StarCraft II in the, the, the first few months. Um, so he had, some, he had some issues committing to it. Um, after that, he... I, I met him at IEM in Cologne, Germany, uh-huh. um, and when he felt like the the atmosphere of how big StarCraft Two is going to be, how big the tournaments are, um, to feel the the tournament scene, to meet the players, um, uh, it, it seems like it sparked something in him that made him realize like this is what I need to do, um, this is what I have to do with my life, this is what I I want to do. So from that moment on, he started practicing really hard, um, and um, I'm, I'm good friends with him, so I mean, we, we talk about this stuff every now and then, um, and the, the, the topic of liquid came up, so eventually we worked something out that made it possible for him to go to Korea, um, and we're going to give that a shot. Um, I think, uh, well, the second, uh, the latest recruitment is, uh, is Hug. Um, I think everyone has seen him like dominating tournaments and, and winning stuff left and right. So, I mean, skill-wise, that, uh, that makes sense. Um, we were still really looking for a, for a protest in Korea, so that makes sense for the team as well. And uh, we, we, we expect great things from both of them. Uh, indeed we do. Uh, Rhett, of course, um, spent considerable time in Korea about a year ago uh, as a Brood War pro gamer. Yeah. But for uh, various reasons, uh, um, that career did not um, uh, take off, and he chose to return to Europe and had took some time off from the scene, as I understand it. But uh, it's now again, as you're saying, fully committed to the course and will be uh, joining the uh, Team Liquid uh, OGS house uh, very soon, along with uh, Hey Pro, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Hey Pro is going to be joining in the next. Um a uh, few weeks he should arrive like around 4th or 5th of October um, have a few days to adjust himself uh, and play the GSL qualifiers uh, 9, and, 9 and 10th of October um, and Red should be coming uh, it, the date Red is coming is a little bit unclear right now he still has some uh, issues in real life that he needs to uh, resolve first before he's able to go so uh, once that happens we can start discussing that but it should hopefully be within one month, maybe two. That's great news. I hope to have uh, Rhett on the show before then so he could um, explain everything himself in further detail. And uh, you mentioned uh, Huck, the most recent uh, acquisition to the team. He, of course, among many other things, won the uh, MLG Rally uh, event and has impressed everybody with his Protoss skills, Uh, got quite a lot of fans. Uh, and I had the pleasure of interviewing him a couple of months back, actually. Uh, will he be going as well, or is he representing North America? Um, the way things look right now, Huck is definitely determined to go. Um, he has a, a lot of commitments before um, before we're ready to do that, though. They are start of commitment, like he's going to play um, IEM New York. Uh, oh, yeah. Then there is MLG, um, was it DC, I think? So he has a he has a few tournaments that he definitely wants to play first, and after that he uh, he has he has his mindset on going to Korea. Basically, the way Huck thinks is uh, like he he just wants to play at the highest level, right? Um, no matter where it is, and if it's like, if that place is Korea, then he is going to Korea. So it's a, it's a great mindset, um, and and the way things look right now, he should be going to Korea maybe one or two months from now as well. Uh, the good news just keep coming for StarCraft fans the world over. That is uh, very good to hear indeed. So that leaves uh, Noni, uh, 
nowadays playing under the handle Liquid Tyler, I believe. But he's also spent some time in Korea, obviously, in the Broodboard days, also chose to return, uh, but um, impressed us all in the uh, Team Liquid Star League um, also before the StarCraft beta come out. Uh, mm-hmm. Will he be uh, your North American asset, or is he returning to Korea as well? No, no, he's, he's definitely going to stay in North America. Um, he is, his personal situation is clearly like a lot different from the other guys, uh, given how he's married. And even even like like you're, <laughs> um, but like you're, you're the, the the way where you are in your life like socially matters a lot whether you, you are or aren't ready to go to Korea right so um, in Noni's case it's it's completely understandable he's not uh, ready to go to Korea he wants to stay in North America he sees the scene develop there especially with MLG um, hosting all these tournaments like MLG getting into StarCraft two is huge yeah. um, and now on top of that. Um, we see that IEM has ambitions in North America as well. So that puts Noni in a really good spot over there. Um, and uh, yeah, the way things look right now, Noni is going to focus on North America or maybe travel a little bit for big tournaments. But North America is definitely his main focus. Well, I, I think everybody's pleased to hear that as well. He's a force to be reckoned with, definitely, especially with those deadly phoenixes or mm-hmm. phoenix eye. Uh, whatever the right plural is. Uh, so uh, my question to you, um, Dan, would be, are Liquid currently looking to acquire even more players, or are you fairly happy with um, the numbers and the characters you got uh, under your banner right now? Um, I think we're definitely, definitely happy with the numbers right now. Um, I wouldn't say we're close or anything like that. Um, but the way the, the way the team is right now, we're we're very happy with um, the way it looks. It looks like if you exclude myself, because I, I don't practice so much, you see two Protoss players, two Terran players, two Zerg players. It's it's the perfect setup for us. Um, at the same time, um, if if a good opportunity presents itself, like a certain good player wants to join our team and we can work something out, we're definitely still open for that. I mean, it's not like we're constantly closing down right after getting huck. It's not like that, but we are very happy with, with where we at. Okay, well, I think many uh, hopeful, aspiring gamers uh, look forward to uh, try to convince you about them being good enough in the near future. Uh, but uh, t- a question to you, uh, Matthew, then, uh, both of you, but um, uh, Matthew foremost, uh, the, the little app factory uh, again the sponsor of uh, liquid is uh, is becoming a recognized name definitely in uh, starcraft circles but it's not uh, a major corporation as such and uh, uh, there have been uh, voices on the forums uh, uh, basically inquiring uh, why not uh, a powerful entity like liquid does not have a similarly huge sponsor i don't know like coca-cola ibm intel whatever but um the the backing you're providing for 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 liquid is uh, quite serious indeed i mean the the players do get a salary and uh, everything like that as i understand it uh, could you expand a bit on that matthew yeah the players do get a salary obviously we're paying for all their transportation and accommodation um so it's quite serious the team right now it would be as serious as any korean um pro gaming team from three or four years ago i assume um before all the money started rolling in so um yeah it's a fairly big commitment from us but uh we're only too happy to pay it right now and all we're trying to do is uh, look for better marketing opportunities with what we've got currently